So, still on the topic of just awesome women-ness, um, Renee did this awesome rap, which I know that you co-wrote, uh, for the BET Hip Hop Awards oh, cipher. Was it incredible? It was so good. Yeah, she's um, the best. So she said, I came to represent the ladies of our history. We know the founding fathers, but the mothers are a mystery. Right. Um, so, you know, in a new play, it's really interesting because Eliza chooses to erase herself from the narrative when she yeah. discovers uh, Alexander's affair. But a lot of women just have been erased from history where yeah. often, you know, you'll read quotes, it's like anonymous. And normally that was a woman or we've seen so many women have to write under pseudonyms, under, under male names, even Joe Rowling, who wrote right. Harry Potter, insisted. Right. Or Those the, great Coleman strike books, they're so good. I know, so good. Yeah. But, you know, said she wanted to be JK because there's so many kind of like... Uh, yeah. irritating things that that hold women back when they when they become a, a female writer or a right. women writer or, or whatever that even means so um you know I, i'm really interested how do you think that women and men can reclaim women's history and the narratives and perspectives of women and and you did this in in hamilton you essentially had to you had to create these stories for women because there's just less yeah there's not a there's not no. a definitive pulitzer winning schuyler sisters biography no. there isn't we had to go no. i had to go and, and yeah. do the research and rely i relied on ron a lot and um um you know to me the most moving th one of the most moving things about hamilton's story is that it is cradled by his wife's story yeah. she's the one who brings it to us yes um and the last chapter of ron's book is about her incredible life and, mm. and how much she accomplished establishing she established the first um, private orphanage uh, which was uh, which still exists in the form of the Graham Wyndham organization which yeah. helps uh, foster kids into adulthood um, and, um, and and ran it for 27 years and if you had put that in a screenplay people would be like it's too on the nose yeah, you yeah, can't yeah, have yeah. the widow of the orphan establish an orphanage it's crazy except it really happened and it's heartbreaking and beautiful um, the other thing that's that's really tragic is she really, you know, she had seven kids besides Philip who passed away, wow. um, and she really tried to get one of them to write her husband's life story, and she passed away uh, before it happened. Oh. Um, one of her sons eventually did complete it, um, but... I also feel for the kids. He left behind so much writing. It's like, how do you begin to make sense of it? Um, but, um, you know, she, that was her thing was, please tell my husband's story. She was so selfless um, mm. in that way that, that women are so often asked to be um, yes. and so often assume as opposed to my story being told as opposed yes. to the woman's being story yeah. being told. Um, but I, I found her story incredibly moving. That's why we end with her. Yeah, which is great. And it's so true, I think, there's this perception that women are inherently, biologically, right. more selfless and giving, and we just do that because we're women and that's how we are, which is such a shame because a, we don't get the credit that we deserve right. as human beings for being so courageous and doing that. Absolutely. And B, it just like, it removes the decision. It removes the agency out of it. It, it takes the Absolutely. choice. Yeah, I feel really lucky. I, I grew up in a house with really strong women. My mom, um, my mom's a psychologist. Um, she was a teacher. She was getting her master's when I was born. And then she's a psychologist. And she was, you know, she had a private practice in our house. So it was like, wow. mom's working. We have to sneak around the patients and like go home. Um, and uh, and my, my wife is, is the same way. My wife was a, a scientist when we started dating, wow. got bored of being a scientist, and then went to law school while Heights was happening. So she's, she's done lawyer. then. Yeah, she's she's she's, 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 just she's the brains not... of the outfit. Wow, actually. Yeah, that's I'm, amazing. I'm slumming it. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's so cool. So yeah, so that's, I mean, I, I say that to say that like that, that thing of women are encouraging, or like that was never my experience. Experience as a kid, it was just, you know, they were just getting just, shit done. Just, just getting so much shit yeah, done. Yeah, that was just. Wow, the thing. that's awesome. Yeah. Um, I love that you're married to like a scientist. That's super cool. Um, I told her to go right to med school from law school. Just like get the trifecta. Just why not? <laughs> yeah, because... just be the scientist, lawyer, doctor. Oh wow. <laughs> she was like, the last one takes too long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so true. That one takes forever. Um, okay, so speaking of awesome women, which 
storytellers, female storytellers, yeah. really have inspired you? Oh, so many. Um, you know, even in just the musical theater genre alone, there are so many incredible uh, examples. I think of my friend Janine Tesori, who's the uh, composer of Fun Home, um, uh, yes. which is an unbelievable show. If you haven't seen that, go see that. Yes, yes, go yes. See that. It was, part you... of our, it was part of our Hip She Arts Week. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a beautiful, it's cool. and it's really, and in addition to just being an incredible, like, that's a story that you would think people always go, oh, a musical about a founding father, oh, a musical about a lesbian cartoonist. Like, no, it's actually the perfect form for it. And and, and she's the, you know, she and her, her co-writer, Lisa, um, really unlocked that. So I, she's a huge, um, she's one of my heroes. Um, and, um, you know, I think of Lizzie Suedos, who passed away, who is the composer, who, by the way, was writing hip hop in 1978 for Broadway wow. with a musical called Runaways, which she wrote all the music, lyrics, books, and directed. Um, wow. And uh, so she's she's one of my big heroes in the theater scene. Um, and then, you know, I think of, God, I mean, I'm thinking of all, like, the young authors growing up, like, I'm thinking of Beverly Cleary, and I'm thinking of Madeline Langle, and I'm thinking of, um, you know, uh, Judy Bloom, and I'm thinking of all these incredible, uh, and JK, of course, of course. Um, the women who raised my brain. Yes! Um, because those were my books. Those were just my books growing up. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, so, yeah, speaking of books and, you know, uh, things that changed your brain, uh, it's impossible for me to look over the fact that Hamilton focuses so much on the importance of education. Yeah. Um, teaching yourself, the power of education, the power of writing. Was there something that really drew you to Hamilton? Yeah, Story absolutely. It's, it's, it's very much a love letter to writers and, yeah. um, and being able to really change your life with writing. Um, that's what Hamilton did. Yeah. Um, he, one of the first letters we have is a letter to his friend Ned Stevens. He's 14 years old and he's talking about um, how miserable he is. He's working for a trading company. He's basically running a trading company um, because the owners are on ships. They're, they're sailing around. And um, he says, um, uh, you know, I may be said to be building castles in the air, but we have seen such schemes successful when the projector is constant. Um, I shall conclude... <laughs> <laughs> this is like this was a huge problem watching your play. It's just that, like <laughs> words just like get me. It's like yeah. I mean, we have seen such schemes successful when the projector is constant. I mean, knock me out. Seriously. And and then he says, and how it? Whoa, 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 rewind. How old do you hear it? Fourteen this? years old. No, <laughs> this isn't a fair. Fourteen years old. Fourteen. Yeah. And then he. So he was like a. He's like a. Pro yeah, he's, he's a like prodigy. A genius. Yeah. He's like a prodigy. And 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 literally wrote his way out. And he concludes that letter by saying, "I shall conclude by saying." that I wish there was a war um, because he knew he didn't have money and he didn't yeah. have family. He knew the only way for him to rise in society was to gain military glory. It was for things to get mixed up. Yeah, yeah. things to get mixed up and for him to be able to, but also like the the the, val the sort of acclaim that comes with winning a military victory. He said, I'll either die virtuously on the battlefield, and I think he had a lot of teen martyrdom fantasies about that. Right. Um, but if that doesn't happen, I'll, I'll, I'll have had a command and I can I can rise up. And the whole time he's working for him, for Washington, He's like, I don't want to be your secretary. I want to be fighting. Like he's he's the only one on like uh, you know best job at the war. Like not fighting, writing, doing the thing he's best at. And he's like, please let me fight. Please let me fight. Please let me fight. Please let me fight. So interesting. And yeah. do you think that's because there's this idea around like, as a man, that's just like the ultimate glory. Even though he he clearly has the most amazing brain of anyone ever. Yeah. Ultimately being being a fighter is like yeah i think he was he was accustomed to that but i think he really understood i think it was his i think his survival like Instincts instinct was super, was super crazy, crazy good. good and he was just like if i leave here just having been a secretary that doesn't get me anything no. i don't have anything and do you think that's also the idea of sacrifice of what he was sort of of the idea of yeah, of sacrifice of what, of what yes, he was willing I think to do for was, his country, I think and he, was, he wanted to show how much he was willing to die for his beliefs, to die for this idea. Absolutely, and you see that borne out again and again. You see him take on unpopular opinions. You see him take on other popular. You know, yeah. it's all about being the crusader. He's a crusader. Yes. yes. Um, whether it's with himself during the war or with yes. his his ideas um, when he's defending the Constitution, um, whether he's fighting with Jefferson over what the government should yeah. do. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, I'm right. Yeah. And I, you know, um, one of the first letters he, he, he has a letter to John Lawrence where he says, um, 
he's, he's talking about, uh, he says, I need you to find me a wife. And it's kind of a crazy letter. He goes, I need you to find me a wife. Um, she should be pretty, but not too pretty. Um, it's very like bro. It's a very bro letter. bro letter. Yeah. He goes, she needs to be pretty, not, not too pretty that I have to like worry about it. Um, <laughs> oh basically, I'm paraphrasing. And then he says, and as to her political opinions, doesn't matter what they are. I will convince her to mine. This is Hamilton who says this. Is this is Hamilton who oh, says this. Oh, I'm liking this. him less now. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. Oh, but that's damn. a real letter. Oh, yeah, but that's was, also speaks to his so arrogance. I was so seduced. Um, you were seduced by schemes. moments ago. Yeah. Your fave is problematic. So well, and now... They're all problematic. I know. People are problematic. <laughs> yeah. That's the difficulty. It's true. So, okay. So basically, because he was just so focused on his political aspirations, he kind of just needed a wife who he could just like... Well, he also said, he also said, I need her to have money because I don't have any. That was another thing he said in the letter. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Well, actually, I mean, I guess in a way, it's a, it's kind of a gender reversal in the sense that we always think it's, you know, a woman at that period of time yes. who would have been looking to marry a wealthy man. That's true. Whereas this is kind of the inverse of that. Yes. Um, yeah, and he writes her actually really hard. There's the, one of the last letters before they get married is this very, I might win you back with this okay, Oh, really? Um, oh, he basically do, says, I, the, the, there's a lyric in the show, uh, will you relish being a poor man's wife? That's from this letter. He says, do you soberly relish the pleasure of being a poor, poor man's, man's wife. wife and he basically says if you marry me like it might like you might be we really broke you yeah. come from money and like and he says like don't have any illusions of like being in a field with garlands in your hair like that's not what being broke is like no being broke sucks it's horrible. um and it's if you're prepared romantic. to live that life yeah. then we can get married because i think i'm gonna do great <laughs> and like then that. you'll just be happily surprised I if like we that. end up having money but he said he like he like really preps her he's like well, he doesn't try and con her he doesn't really try like. to con her he he really like it's it's a very you know there's the arrogant letter to Lawrence, which is like get me a wife and then there's this letter which is like don't marry me because if you don't think you can be happy poor yeah you know so it's that bedrock of arrogance and insecurity that i think makes him so i think it makes him so relatable he's on in one minute he's like i'll convince her yeah. and one minute he's like oh my god am i like me for real though yeah do you really like me for real yeah no i think hamilton's most compelling moments for me are always these moments when he is when he makes decisions to courageously be authentic and truthful yes. um even though it costs him yes. and, and even though that letter could have cost him eliza potentially right. she could have been like oh i thought you were poor but not that poor <laughs> um actually maybe i'm not so into this anymore